Hi, this is George Cow, and uh, some of you who have followed me for a while know that I have had um, some challenges with the idea of limiting beliefs. Uh, a couple years ago, I made a video about it, and uh, recently, one of my colleagues, Evelyn, who's here with me. Hi, Evelyn. Hello. Yeah. Um, she uh, asked me about it. She's like, you know, George, you, you, you talk about how maybe there's no such thing as limiting beliefs, and people might be uh, spinning themselves, you know, around with, with this idea of limiting beliefs. And uh, what do you think about it now? And I've actually softened my beliefs about limiting beliefs. I used <laughs> to be kind of more hardcore saying there are no limiting beliefs. Um, I don't believe in that kind of work. But then over the years, as I've seen people work on these things, I'm like, there's something there about it. And Evelyn actually works with a lot of people over the years regarding clearing their limiting beliefs and she's seen success with it. So Evelyn, that's why I wanted to bring you here and to have a conversation. I figure uh, throughout the, through the conversation, of course, people will get to know your work as well. And so maybe we'll start with, um, what is your perspective on um, limiting beliefs or, or we could even, uh, you could even use any examples of work you've done with clients in the past some of the issues they bring to you, but however you want to start this, this idea, yeah. Well, first of all, thank you, George, for having me here and a chance to have this conversation with you. Um, I would like to start by saying that I was also a skeptic. I was a total skeptic. And it was like, I think more than 15 years ago when I was... Um, kind of dragged into my first workshop and that was an EFT workshop. My husband had signed me up for it and at that point we were just exploring different ideas and all that but I would say that I was quite close. I was reluctant to attend. I mean just imagine like your spouse signing you up for something and you're being kind of forced to go because it's already being paid for. So that was um, a weekend workshop. I didn't think that I got much out of it because it was just an, a weekend. But uh, eventually, uh, as life would turn out, a couple of months later, we found that we were in a lot of challenges. And um, it started with my husband going into a slight depression because he decided to start his own business. And then um, that's when we decided to, you know what, let's give this a try and see if it works. So we tried it on a variety of situations, from money situation, migraine, um, pain, shoulders, etc., and so on. And we started to see that, you know what, it kind of works. And, um, and it started with my husband, but later on, I started to use that on myself i work with a practitioner yeah and i just and, want to mention i mean you you mm -hmm. you've already brought together uh you've brought forward several issues you, like money issues yes. even physical issues too yes interesting okay yeah go ahead and um and what happened was that still i wasn't convinced like i said i was a total skeptic and i decided that the only way to know is to put myself out there and just, you know, um, let anyone know who is, who would, if you're having problems or struggling or feeling stressed out, let's try and see if this works. And then eventually, I, when I surveyed uh, some of my subscribers, I found out that money issues were consistently the thing that was being highlighted as the one area that stresses them the most. So I thought, you know what? Let's try this again and see if it works for others. And I've been quite blown away by some of the results that uh, clients get. But they can come to me for almost anything that they are feeling stressed or stuck about. And we work on finding out um, what are some of the beliefs that could be driving all these repetitive patterns of uh, stress and struggle. Yeah, so this, it, this was how I got started. Right. It's so interesting because recently I, um, you know, in my TLC program, I found myself instructing the group to look at if they have an emotional state that's not helpful to them, negative state, 
what might be a underlying belief in that? And then I caught myself thinking, oh my God, that's a limiting belief, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so I have come a long way with, with regards to this. But um, so you have been working a lot on the money issues with, with people. So maybe we can, we can talk, we can focus on that a little bit here. Um, what are some examples of limiting beliefs when it comes to money? It could, it, the, the thing is, a lot of people may say that they are already aware that um, they have this belief of uh, I'm not good enough. So that's one big belief there. But there are also different aspects or nuances to it. It could be that I don't feel wanted or I don't feel that um, I'm worthy. So if we can get specifically to what they are actually saying to themselves, and the conclusion that they have made, then that is going to be a lot more powerful. Let me um, share an example. So this was one of the early clients that I've worked with. She is, by the time she came to see me, she, was, she already had three marriage breakdowns. And uh, she, wanted, she, she wanted to start a new business. Uh, she wanted to go into the property line, but she found that she consistently had the problem of getting her contracts signed. So her or prospective buyers would be like, um, you know, telling her yes, but just at the point where her agreements were about to be signed, none of these agreements could go through. So when she contacted me, I had no idea that her situation was really bad. Like, you know, she was going through a divorce. She had to pay her husband money and all that. I, I didn't know the extent of her situation. Um, so we started working together and uh, there were a couple of things that we worked on, but one particular uh, memory or event was about uh, her being given pocket money, right? And then, but this, the money she was given was immediately taken away from her. So it was like a game, like her parents were playing with her. And the conclusion that she made was that, you know, what she wanted, right? She wanted to buy candy, but would always be out of reach. So again, it's about maybe not good enough, but it was with a slight nuance to it. Like the things that I want would be out of reach. And throughout her life, you know, it keeps the same patterns keep being repeated. So this is, this is uh, just one story. And, um, but I would say that because I work a lot on one-on-one -on -one with clients, it's not, there are no standard, you know, there's no standard. So I've helped clients who have uh, worked on issues like um, they don't feel wanted, they don't feel they don't belong, um, maybe the teacher slapped them in school or they fail in math. So any incident uh, where in that moment of trauma, they formed a limiting belief, like, you know, I can't have this or it's, it's shameful. I need to be perfect in order to be loved and approved. So that's when uh, we need to release the trauma that is in the past even though it's considered, or they may have considered that this is a small event, you know, let's not make, make a big deal, no big fast and all that. But we find that it's actually all these small little uh, events where they have made a conclusion about themselves or about the world that is affecting their results today. Mm. So um, that's very interesting. And when, what happened to that client? I mean, once you worked with, her, um, I'm sorry if you mentioned that, that I didn't catch it. What happened at the end? Like, or is it still ongoing? I don't know. But oh no, uh, yeah. <laughs> right for her, um, within five months, she was able to pay back her loan. Wow. She got 25 contracts, uh, wow. real estate contracts. That's a lot for real estate. Yeah, she got yeah, invited yeah. to speak in industry, um, in her industry. And uh, she appeared in magazines. So that was, it was huge. Wow. And uh, she credits that to something yes. clearing with that limiting belief. And then, so why do you think that happens? Um, I have my theory about it. 
maybe I'll share my theory briefly, but I'd love to know what you think. And maybe, maybe it's what, I guess perhaps the limiting belief creates two things. It creates a negative emotional state, especially when we're about to do something that was connected to that limiting belief or trauma. And that negative emotional state might actually stop us from doing that thing or self-sabotage us. Like maybe, I don't know, I mean, I'm guessing maybe when the client, when she had that limiting thought and that was creating this Lim limit in her in her business or in her life she maybe at the point of signing the contract she would self-sabotage or do something because she didn't feel like it was supposed to happen so she almost like subconsciously uh, yes but, but it could be but what, what do you think why 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 does the limiting belief create limit i guess in our in our lives um because it shapes it shapes uh our perception I mean, mm, have you, okay. do you know about the work of Dr. Bruce Lipton? Yes, yes. Yeah. But go ahead so and share what you understand about that. Yeah. Okay, so, um, yeah, at that, at that point when I was a true skeptic, I came across his work and that was how I started to, you know, well, okay, let me just give this a try and see whether does this, is this really uh, true, like what he's saying. So he's, he said, oh, okay, if, if I'm interpreting or if I'm getting it correct, is that the, our perception of the world actually drives our reactions, responses, and how, and the actions that we undertake. Um, but these perceptions are shaped by the beliefs. So we change the belief, we change our perception, and therefore change the results. In his work as a cellulist, a cellular biologist, she was saying that we are not victims of our genes, but masters of our genetics, which goes to show that we can actually change a lot in our lives, even though sometimes we think that we've inherited these genes. But no, if we can work on the beliefs, then a lot of things can change for us. I th I'm not sure if this is correct. I think the term may, may be epigenetics, right? Oh, yeah. Um, epigenetics. Um, yes. Uh, the study of, I'm just Googling this, the, the study of how your behaviors and environment can cause changes in a, and affect the way your genes work. This is actually from the CDC, <laughs> the definition of it. Um, and yeah, that's so interesting. So Beliefs shape perception, which shape results. Now, what I'm curious about, if you now belief shaping perception, that seems more obvious to me. But maybe what's less obvious to well, it's less obvious to me, and maybe to the people listening to this is how do you think perception then shapes results? Because what, it's what do you think how, is happening there? Yeah, yeah, it's how we are responding to the world. Right. And um, if, you know, because um, part of the, the, the issues that we have, right, the struggles or the stress that we have today, a lot of it is because we have been programmed to react in the same manner. And, in, and if we trace it all the way back, right, if we follow the energy, because that's what I always do, like I, I, when a client comes to me, we are following her energy and we follow her energy to trace back to what has happened in the past. And in that moment where she made that conclusion, a block is created in her energy system. So when I use a lot of EFT these days, so when we are releasing that, that energetic block, it somehow calms the sympathetic nervous system to let her know that actually it's safe right now. There is no real threat. Whatever threat that has happened was in the past is no longer true right now. So the more we can calm ourselves, the more we are free to undertake a new action or behavior. That makes a lot of sense. It's almost like uh, if you believe that the door is locked and you just believe it, that it's impossible, that it, you have no key, it's locked. You will never even try to open it. That's the yes, perception. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and, but if you, <laughs> yes. if, you, if you believe that, well, the door might be unlocked 
or I might have the key to it, then you actually will take the action to open the door or try a different key. Uh, and therefore the door opens for you where before the perception of, sometimes the perception is even there's no door here. Uh, it's just yes. a wall. <laughs> and then exactly. it's, like, it's like, it's like those um, illusions, uh, what do you call it? Uh, visual illusions where you like see a painting and it's all lines, but then you, if you see it just right, you see there's something in the painting. There's actually a tree or something like that. It's, it's like you, 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 you to change a perception and you actually see something different and you're able to take action based on that, that new perception. So that, that makes a lot of sense to me. Um, this is really, so um, maybe you could tell us about another example, if you have one, about while well, we're still on this topic of money i think that's relevant to a lot of people here and, and whether it's money actually or business yeah. since there's a lot of folks watching who are working on their business what's another maybe limiting belief or example of how it's keeping us from taking action um another example i have is this um la this lady who wanted to be able to present she had problems in public speaking, uh, showing up on the, uh, videos. And um, so we started working together. And now for her, she has tried meditation. And usually a lot of my clients have tried a lot of things from meditation, uh, law of attraction, thinking positively, et cetera, and so on. So she has tried uh, quite a lot of uh, things for a number of years. And... Uh, but she found that it was even difficult for her to give a five-minute presentation for Toastmasters. So she wanted to practice. She signed up for Toastmasters. She thought that that could help build her confidence. In a way, it did, but she was still very, very nervous. And she realized that her low self-confidence was affecting actually a lot of areas in her life. And she needed to work on that. So we started working together. And again, not knowing exactly what uh, issue in the past could have, or what belief that could be with, uh, you know, like her experiencing her low sense of confidence. And what we got was that she had felt unwanted for a very long time. And so it's like, how does unwanted link to a public speaking issue, right? The thing is that, yeah, she felt unwanted and um, the event or the incident or the story when she had in the past was about her mom not wanting her and as we got as we traced back it was a case of mom uh, almost aborting her a few times so we actually worked on that now that integration into a sense of wholeness because I use energy healing tools as well the integration into wholeness actually gave her the permission to be here, to be herself, that it's okay to be, you know, to, 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 to feel that sense of belonging here. And that actually helped her gain a greater sense of confidence. So in the end, um, after working with her, she was able to give uh, presentations like last year when the pandemic started, she was giving two to three hour workshop classes with no problems. So it's not that she, she still have sometimes anxiety like we all do for public speaking and presentations, but she was able to conduct two to three hour classes. So that's huge. Yeah, wow, well, that's a powerful example. Thank you for, for sharing that. And I'm so glad that, that uh, the client was able to work with you on the blog. So, um, maybe one more question and then, and then we can start to complete the conversation. You mentioned energetic block. So how, what is an energetic block and how does that relate to limiting beliefs? The belief can create an energetic block in the system because it's like um, when there's nothing in the way, right? We are for the lack of a better word, we are powerful. We can manifest what we want. You know, we, we, there's nothing that stops us. But when we create a belief and a conclusion, and it's a limiting one, it stops us from uh, aligning with our fullest potential. 
So that creates an energy block in our, in our, in our system. So by releasing that trauma, right, for, at, at least for this, this last uh, example that I was bringing up, of feeling unwanted and letting her know that it's no longer true or even that she can actually kind of help herself by reparenting herself with love and nourishment and all that, then uh, the, the block just dissolves. Yeah, and the way I think about energy block, I guess it's like it's a block to using your energy, <laughs> right? It's like a block to using energy towards something. And um, the belief is that kind of that, that hurdle there. Well, Evelyn, thank you so much for, for sharing these um, inspiring stories, uh, possibility. Um, so what are a few tools that you use? So you mentioned EFT. Yes. And I think probably a lot of folks listening to this have heard of EFT. Um, do you want to describe it a little bit? Just like a minute. EFT involves using our fingertips to tap on specific uh, meridian points on our face and body. It's an emotional form of acupuncture. And um, I would say that it's been pretty amazing. Yeah, and it doesn't uh, require that, needles. It's just yeah, it using doesn't, a finger. Yeah, it's, so it doesn't hurt. It doesn't, you know, there's no possibility of yeah. hurting. <laughs> I still physically. can't, yeah, I, for myself, I find that, you know, there's a whole science to it. Yes. It's, it's not necessary to know it, at least for me, right? The, the, the whole science, like what the researchers say and all that. To me, what's more important is that it works. I, I don't really need to know like this point is releasing what, uh, what emotion or yeah. the other point. It, it doesn't, it doesn't um, it's not really a necessary information to have when we are, when we are applying it. Yeah, I think different people need different types of information to believe something but it's great that increasingly uh, there has been science demonstrating the effectiveness of EFT um, the other thing you mentioned you use is energy healing do you want to say a bit about that yes um, so we one of the things that I help my clients with is that after doing the release work we would install a new belief and we would rewrite the entire vibrational story because if she's been having this story of I'm not feeling wanted, that's the story she's beaming out to the universe. So through uh, some, an energetic process, we install the new belief and then we create the visualization such that she switches a new, to a new picture. And this new picture is a picture with the belief of I'm feeling wanted. Um, maybe it's bright, it's colorful, it's uh, the, the energy of it is more joyful, more lifted. So we, we change that so that in, in that integration process, she gets aligned with a new uh, picture altogether. Mm. Thank you. That's beautiful. Um, and I, I, I just realized I have a question that I don't know if we were able to talk about in just a few minutes, but when people do energy or limiting belief type work mm -hmm. and it doesn't work for them, I mean, over the years, I'm sure you have come across people that have tried many different kinds of limiting belief type work and it didn't work for them. They're still the same after maybe even years of trying something. I know there could be many reasons, but what might be a re one reason that it didn't so-called didn't work for them? Um, okay, so sometimes uh, when we are trying, because when we are trying to, I, I see like this is like detective work. Like we are trying to find a needle in a haystack sometimes because a lot of times we tend to bury some of the things that have happened in the past. Um, so sometimes when we are tapping through, we, 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 we are not specific enough uh, in the event or in identifying the belief. So for example, this is a, just a very easy example to bring up. Let's say if, uh, a person has a fear of going onto a plane. So it's a fear of flying. So at first you may be tapping on the fear of flying, but she still has that anxiety after working through that then it could be that we find out that it's not fear of flying, 
but it's fear of dying from a plane crash. So it could be more specific than that. And then we may also find out that it could be part of that, but it could also be a fear of, say, getting paralyzed, right, if the plane crashed. So there are specific uh, beliefs that could actually be the part that we are missing. So mm. the more specific we are, yeah. right, the better the results. Wow. That's very helpful. And I'm sure there are other reasons we could talk about. Perhaps I would encourage you to uh, you know, create some content around, around why these, when these things don't work and what might be the case. I think that would be quite interesting for people. But I will be sure to put um, you know, be, those watching this video um, above or below the video somewhere will be um, at least one or two links to Evelyn's content. Um, Evelyn, thank you so much for, for what you do and how you do it and this, the spirit with which you, you do it. Um, any final words of encouragement uh, for this video before we conclude? Well, I just want to thank you, George, for this opportunity to be here on this call with you. It's great having a conversation with you. Yeah. And uh, it's been my privilege to connect with you and to work with you. Yeah, thank you so much. Well, folks, if you, if this, was interesting definitely check out Evelyn's content as of this recording Evelyn you have uh, been become um, doing some really interesting stuff on Instagram that I that I've been enjoying uh, so you know whether you know anyway click on the links in the in the notes of the video and you can you can take a look at Evelyn's content so thanks Evelyn thank you thank you George